I had a lady a few years ago, she came to me, she, she said, um, she was running a PNC office out of Oklahoma. She said, hey, I'm like 60 days from closing the doors. I'm like, well, thanks for waiting till the end. She said, I need your help. I said, okay, it's normally this, but I do want to help you, so I'll do it for this, and I'll come spend the day at your office. I did rarely ever do that, by the way, and if I did, it'd be a ridiculous number that nobody would ever accept. However, I did this a lot more years ago. And just because also, too, at some point, you got to start valuing your time. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, we're not a charity. I can't, I love giving back. I love doing special stuff. But at some point, like, you know, if I'm always doing other stuff and I'm not generating revenue, then guess what? The team that my team members are going to have to get another employer because they're not making any money and I can't pay them. Right? Because it's all a trickle effect. And so I went into her office and we spent the day together. And you, I mean, it's, this is probably the average office. Like, there's, not, there's barely hours. People show up late. There's, they never train. There's no activity. Nobody knows what they're supposed to do. Someone calls in to cancel a policy. There's no script. So someone's trying to make a sell, or they want a bundle, or they want to cross sell when they're on the phone, or they want to add a life policy, whatever. There's no script. There's no training. It's like, just ask, hey, do you want to add a life policy? Well, nobody wants to. <laughs> Let's be honest. Now you get the occasional one of every thousand people that are like, yes, I would love to buy life insurance right now, right? Well, that, yeah, it's going to happen, but it's super rare. There was, there was, uh, the, the, nobody ate lunch together. There was no community. It was just, you know what I mean? It was just, it was a typical insurance office in the U.S. that doesn't take it seriously. It's, I mean, I, I think we do at first. I think truthfully, like at first, as business owners, we take it very seriously at first. And then something happens over time and we just get lazy. We stop being intentional about success. We forgot why we want to do this business and, and create generational wealth and make all this money for our future families and take care of all of our team members and like do something special and have a bunch of fun. We, we, we did, we, we intended on all that happening in the beginning, but then over time we just like, we almost like distance ourselves so much from our team, be like hire managers. I don't want to see anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to know anybody's name until they like are, uh, you know, incredible. And then we just get so distant from the organization that then we wonder why it doesn't succeed because it never, we started with an identity, the identity was us. And then later on in life and in business, we lose the identity. And then the company looks nothing like we thought it would. And the company is totally different than we originally intended when we opened it. That kind of sucks, right? It does. And there's been plenty of moments, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, there's been plenty of moments over the last six and a half years of building these different companies with staff that I've gotten too distant, right? I shared some of this before. I lost a COO and 75% of one of my sales teams a year ago. That was my fault. It wasn't anybody else's fault. It was 100% my fault. Now, is our company better than since they left? 1,000%. I don't miss them for a second, but it was my bad. How do you correct something like that? How do you correct something? That's a good question. So, mo so, so the natural instinct is, is, is human nature is like, well, they weren't any good. They didn't do this. Then we start going around to the team members and be like, can you believe that those are, they're losers, man. Like they left. But we don't even need them, do we? Like they were terrible. And then they're thinking, they were, the other team members are like, they were better than me. What are you talking about? What do you think about me if they were terrible, right? How I fixed it is I started implementing, I started actually caring about team members. You know, like there's team members that have been there a long time, Dylan included. That dude, we got a special bond. Love the dude. He's incredible. I, I, I know a lot about him. He's been there for four, you know what I mean? He's been there over four years. That's easy. But someone that's been there like 12 days, we just don't seem to care, you know? We just don't seem to care. Or if somebody leaves, or I used to say stuff like, you know what? If people leave, they leave. We're charging on. Like this thing is amazing and it's big and it's incredible and we lose people, they're bad. They're jumping off the ship too soon. They're going to drown. You know, it's just dumb, right? Well, it's, it's, it, I had to look into my, look internally and say, like I would say a year ago, personally, a lot of the relationships in my life were not where they should have been. And it was 100% my fault. I was so focused on just making money and, and charging forth that I forgot about everybody in my life, family, wife, team members, like all those things. I wasn't giving them the, the, the care and attention that they deserved. And I had to just look internally and say, hey, that's on me. And what really woke me up is right after that happened, 
one of the team members, his name's Derek, I don't even know if he realized he did this. I mean, he does now, but I don't know if he, I don't know if he realized he was doing this for this reason at the time. He's been with me over four years too. He runs my sales team. Awesome. Love the guy. He invited me to a men's conference called Bold in Springfield, Missouri, right outside Springfield, Missouri. And there was a couple of pastors there. One speaks in Dubai and all over the place. He's incredible. Another local pastor, he's incredible too. He actually is in charge of, uh, he's the pastor of the church that I go to now, um, Courageous Church in Springfield, Missouri. And one of them said something, and, they, and, they, and it was all about intentional. The whole message, the whole night was all, and this has just happened, like days before. The whole message was about intentional relationships. He works in mysterious ways. He does, man. It's crazy. All, and I'm like, I'm sitting there like, why? Like, at first I'm like, oh, a men's conference? Like, can't we at least make it co-ed? Like, what are we doing? You know? <laughs> I thought it was weird that just, just men came to hang out at a conference. I, I did, I swear. Dude, it was one of the coolest things I've ever been to. And it woke me up as a leader. It woke me up as a person. I, sometimes we need somebody to just punch us in the gut. We don't want it, but we need it. And there was another thing that was said at some point in the night. It said, um, maybe you're just fitting in when you were truly called to stand out. And I, in a lot of ways, I may have been standing out in certain areas, but in a lot of ways I was fitting in. I wasn't standing out in my marriage. I wasn't standing out for my team. I wasn't standing out for the, the new people that were coming into organization. But I needed to, you know? And so now we do those little things. I'm texting our team constantly. I'm checking on them, even when I'm gone. When I'm gone, I used, I used to never talk to anybody for days and weeks, other than like just the COO. That's, in, that's insane. That's like the death of a company. Now, I'm checking on people constantly. I'm in Slack. I'm super active. I'm calling people all the time. How, how's it going? Is there anything I can do? Anything I can help you to do you know, today? Uh, people are doing, do, hit, hitting sales goals, having monster weeks. Devin's at 40K for the month, 19K like last week. 16K, 19K, whatever it was, a big number, right? 19? Even better. He's like, don't shortchange me. It's 19, bro, okay? <laughs> Dude, and I'm letting Devin know. That's incredible. That's awesome. I would have never known that a year ago. I had to be more intentional about knowing what was actually going on. So a lot of this stuff I've learned over time. I've learned from others. I've learned from John Maxwell and all these other people in the world that are way more impressive than me. And then some of this we just learned because of trial and error and problems. It's kind of interesting. This has nothing to do with my notes, and i got eight minutes. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm kind of enjoying this little churn and where it's going, so thank you. I believe in life that problems are a blessing. I believe that trials and tribulations are a blessing. I believe that sacrifices are a blessing. Because T.D. Jakes always says that if, if, if you're going through a lot of struggle in your life, that maybe you're being tested for that next level of leadership. We all say we want to reach our full potential, we want to be better leaders, we want to be incredible people, but we struggle to like, or we just, we, 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 give, we give in too soon. We give up. We actually hate that we're going through the trial and the trouble. Like, you know what? We had, we sent out some uh, automated voicemails, some voicemail drops, okay? Talk about being vulnerable, which I'm trying to be better at as a speaker, by the way, because people enjoy it, it's good, but I hate it. <laughs> um, we had a, we dropped some, for our Ultimate Agent Contest, we did some voicemail drops into some people in our audience. And we get a lawsuit in the mail. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, found out this person is suing 29 people at the same time that all did voicemail drops. Well, we never do cold anything. All 60,000 people on our email list had opted, have totally opted in. They want information from us most of the time. They at least ask for some information at some point, right? Well, I'm going through this and initially I'm like, this person's a scam and they're, they're trolling people and this is ridiculous and what, what's going on? Maybe it's one of those moments that's a blessing. Now, am I going to pay this person to go away? Did I have to just give an attorney $10,000 $10, retainer to, to, to retain them? To pay somebody else money for something that is, is, is ridiculous? Yes. But is it a blessing? Is my team going to learn from it? Am I going to learn from it? Am I going to be better because I went through the situation? Yes. So technically, it's a blessing. So whatever the person's name is, I forget. Thank you. But along the way, we, we, the last thing we want to do is like, 
realize that we're being put through those things because we are becoming a better version of us. And what's interesting is if we ever throw in the towel as we're going through these things, what we're really saying is, I don't want to go any higher, I don't want to get any better, I don't reach my full potential. But the truth is we do. And so a year ago, I had to go through a lot, long story short, I had to go through a lot of stuff that I just didn't want to go through, but I needed to go through it. And there's things that some of you are going through right now that you need to go through. You're going through it for a reason. It's actually a blessing because you're gonna be better once you get to the other side of it. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. When I first joined and decided to kind of jump in, I was really, it was kind of one foot in, one foot out. And I remember being out in the field, I went to my first home, my second home, my third home, and it was by the end of that,